Hi everyone, uh, my name is Alessandro Longo and I'm here with Anna Fasolato and Pekka Koskinken. We are not the only members of the team, there are two friends that are in Europe, uh, Abhishek and Laura, born uh, within the frame of the United Screens Network. United Screens is a research and networking project started around 2018 that connected um, like dozens of organizations uh, involved in cinema uh, with a special focus on the Global South. Uh, with the intent uh, to tackle the issues with uh, cinema distribution uh, around the world. The United Screens, during our last gathering in Jakarta, Indonesia, uh, the proposal emerged uh, of creating a, 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 a prototype, a techno-social system, for actually tackling the issues that we... It's a ghost, okay. <laughs> so I was saying, yeah, during our last gathering in Jakarta, Indonesia, uh, we assembled a proposal uh, that is now Meshdia to actually uh, create a prototype for a social uh, web that allows for an alternative mode of media distribution. Uh, in particular, our focus is dedicated to the cinema of the global south and why is it so? Uh, well, uh, among the many differences that filmmakers and distributors have in different countries of the Global South, they all share a situation of political and economic fragility that uh, doesn't facilitate the circulation of their work and the economic value of those work uh, to be appreciated. So we uh, are focused on that. However, our system uh, can be applied to different forms of media. And, uh, yes, still this life. Because we ultimately think that the issue of distribution is a, is a social uh, problem, a problem of social relationships among the actors involved in this system, uh, like the viewers, the distributors, and the art makers, the public, and so on. And it is precisely on these kind of social relationships that we aim to intervene uh, with this presentation and in this, uh, in this uh, grant focus. And that's why we are currently focusing on uh, licenses, and especially with a particular understanding of licenses that Peku will explain to you. I will do like. uh, maybe one thing to mention is, while the topic here is cinema, I think many of the structures are really, if not media, not completely media agnostic, they are applicable to many, many different forms because our organizational structures, including licenses, are much more similar regardless of what media they are distributing. So that's, um, in this sense, we are talking uh, or exploring something that is more general, even though we are currently con uh, concentrating on cinema and film. Uh, we have wanted to slice one practical thing. We have a short time, we cannot tell the whole project, everything that we're doing, so here's one slice, which is particularly this focus on licenses and how to approach licenses. And uh, I present it as a snapshot. Like first, there is a sentence, licenses as organizational media, um, which is something we'll open up in the next couple of minutes. Uh, so, um, but, uh, so first, um, now, there are solid reasons why licenses are important. For example, uh, you might know or might not know about how essentially the open source was enabled by licenses. Like, uh, the GBL license was the first thing uh, uh, produced as an enabler to actualize open source. And similarly, like why there were different organizations around open knowledge, it was the Creative Commons that became the uh, gathering point because of the work on licenses. Um, and I could pick up the other examples, uh, maybe a short one is that actually all the internet structures from IP addresses to FTPs, etc., have always produced for every protocol a license structure to solidify their freedom. So the internet is also a license-based structure itself in, in terms of its very <coughs> protocols, TCP, IP included. So, but why licenses? Well, uh, what is interesting about them? To start off, you could think like a license as something that sets 
the rules of a social game around a property, uh, which, is, which could be really anything. And from this perspective, the idea of a license is surprisingly flexible. Um, because it's great. So what we traditionally think, and this is even the picture of open source and uh, Creative Commons, that we're really talking about, let's say, the uh, operative freedom in terms of economy, this is free, or this cost, this is commercial, this is not commercial. That's one dimension. But if it's actually, because the license is a rights distributor, it's way more than economy. But rather, you can think of licenses like a freely moving media object that can land on somewhere, somebody can engage with it and start to organize, unfold an organization from that point, which can happen elsewhere and elsewhere like mushroom patches. So in this sense, license quite literally is a possibility of a media that works as an organizational seed, seeded to the world. Um, and this power is something that, by the way, it's not just us. There are wonky legal theorists that have pointed this out, this possibility. But practically, it hasn't been implemented. But the legal background of this is very solid. It comes from the very same pathway where open source come from. But OK, that sets a huge laugh. Like, what to think of this dimension of organization? How can we explore this range of possibilities in this vast field uh, where you kind of have to test almost everything before you know how it works. So uh, let's move one slide down. So one of the, my endless metaphors here was that we can think of it as a social game. Um, and we can think of that quite literally, like anything that is in an organization can be presented as a game. Like, we can write the rules of how an organization works, like, oh, you have this role, and you have this right, and you have a right to a payment, and so on. Like, games have the same range and beyond as any organization does. But that means that this includes the license space, this vast space that we're looking at, that we could write rules between us, essentially a social game, probably doesn't have to be longer than that, if you play this, what happens? and use that to actually understand what is this interesting, is this enticing, is this motivating, is this socially engaging, and on and on. And we can even, we can go one slide more, um, start from the play itself, rather than having the game beforehand. Uh, this comes from um, a nerdy play testing developments. There is a particular form called play to, playstorming, and if you search it from the in internet, good luck. There is very little stuff on it. But it's, um, it's an interesting approach that is very solid in how it works. It has an idea that you can kind of start playing a game by having part of the game and then developing the game as you're playing it. And it works quite well. But if we apply this, you can bring to people like, hey, we have this idea of an interaction. Let's start playing it. Let's include the people in conversation of, hey, they would like this direction, what if we write it like this rule, let's play it immediately, or oh, it doesn't work, let's change it, and actually kind of write the game down from the play itself. But now, why to do this in the first place is because the game rules kind of set the contours of what the license ultimately wants to stabilize. So developing a license is still, it's not the heaviest thing in the world, but you probably need a lawyer. And you probably need several thousand, probably 10,000 euros, dollars, pick your poison. Um, um, but once you're able to find out the contours in games, and once you find an interesting one, then you can take a dive into actually sort of defining it with a license or even go to software level. So all of that together, now we're going to go forward, uh, sets a possibility of an arc where you can start even from play, write that down into game rules in discourse with people, and, and make many light, quick versions and share them, and use that to explore the space. Once you find something interesting, you can dive down to a license only when the interesting thing happens.
So that's a pragmatic method which we are thinking of using to explore what kind of organizations, as the license enable, we actually want to use for this form. And I find final point, I think this is important precisely because one you, once you're talking about organization between people, you cannot really design everything from the table. You have to run it by people to actually understand what happens. This is true of games, the common saying, you should have play tested the game yesterday. Um, it's a game designer nerd joke, but I assure you, forgive me for that. But, but it, the same is true for social forms that if you're just making it in theory, you're not knowledgeable of what actually happens. But this sort of playtesting, while not giving you some kind of absolute knowledge, gives you a much more better pragmatic knowledge of what could happen. And that's the snapshot. Yeah, so in conclusion, with licenses, we have a solid way to implement new social forms of, circul of circulation uh, for ownership and beyond ownership. And um, with our art, from games uh, to licenses, we can also have, we have a flexible and quick uh, method to explore the spaces of these uh, forms. Uh, of course, also utilizing new, um, uh, new software architectures to automatize these forms into application. And last but not least, we have a um, global community of cinema practitioners, they are ready to play test with us. Thank you so much.